Yo, Solarloon here, and this is <sighs> another time I'm recording this uh, tutorial on palettes um, in GIMP. Uh, I'm trying out some new software using Lightworks to make the videos, or rather stitch them together instead of Blender, um, uh, because I'm using a new recorder and stuff, so I'm trying some things out, and it's an interesting experience, we'll say. Um, so, GIMP. Um, using palettes in GIMP is useful. I'm not so sure how to do it in other programs, so unfortunately if you're going to uh, ask like, oh, how do you do it in Photoshop, or I was wondering how you do it with paint.net or something like that, I just don't know. I, I don't have those programs and I don't, uh, you know, frequently use them, so I, I just, uh, the, the area, my area of expertise is very limited. So GIMP, palettes, why? Now palettes are interesting because they allow you to restrict your colors to colors that you know you made. Um, Let's say uh, I drew something. We'll, we'll just give like let me just get a cube going real quick. That was horrible. <laughs> and give him some eyes like so. Let's say okay. So there's our cube, and he's kind of a happy guy. Yeah, let's let's make him happy. Cool. Now let's say we wanted to shade this dude, right? Let's this dude. <laughs> let's say we wanted to shade him. So we go ahead and select a color like 60, uh, which is you know 40. Uh, points lower than the bright red we selected. Choose that, go ahead and you know make him uh, dark on the front. Okay, cool. But now let's say we come back days later and we want to make another sprite. Well, how do we know which colors we used? We'd have to open the image and, and use those if we want to use the same colors, which we probably do if we want a bright red character. You probably don't want a slightly off, you know, color character, a slightly off, you know. Uh, you want to be sure that your colors are selected, your colors are, are consistent. Um, and even worse would be, or I guess the main reason is, uh, that you would want to use palettes is in a situation like this, I could easily do something like this and accidentally tweak it to be a slightly different, um, slightly lower value, um, you know, darker shade and not even notice it from afar. I wouldn't be able to see it, but then, you know, on screen you could see it's, it's a slightly different value. So that kind of thing can be prevented by using palettes, which restrict your colors and allow you to select them beforehand. Okay, cool, so how do we use a palette um, in, in GIMP? Well, on the right-hand side uh, of your little workspace, you have the palette pane or the palette window. And so you have different palettes that GIMP ships with, and you can also add palettes there yourself. Um, if the palette pane isn't there, I believe you can get to it from the Windows Dockable Dialogs palette menu option here, right around there. Cool, now, um, so I have a, a few palettes here that I've, I've gotten. Uh, for example, Seleucius. I got one of Seleucius' uh, palettes from uh, Twitter. He's someone I follow on Twitter. He's a, a pixel artist. Uh, I have one from Dawnbringer, which is um, a way of the pixel or, or pixel joint or a pixel form where uh, I found, you know, uh, someone who said, you know, here's a, a, t a palette I made. I got one of the Nintendo Entertainment System. So you can add your own palettes in here. So how do we do that? Well, there's a few ways. So I'm going to right click here and select import palette. So there's a few ways you can go ahead and select your, your palette. One way is to do so by a, a gradient. Another way is to do so by a specific palette file, which you might be able to find or, or make, but it's easier to just use the image. Um, and basically what this is going to do is use, or I'm sorry, make a palette out of all the colors in an image that's there or that you load in. So we can do that. Let's go ahead and open a palette that I made here. And this is a palette, it's super small, but this is a palette um, that I made. And so it's it's in progress, it, it works pretty well for my purposes, I think. I could probably use more desaturated values or something. Um, the interesting thing is that you don't want to make a palette that's like, has so many colors that you might as well not use a palette at all. Because, you know, it's so fine and so, you know, specific. But at the same time, uh, you want one that, you know, allows you to cover all your bases. So it's kind of something I need to work on. But anyway, anyway, no one cares about that. Um, <laughs> The palette. This is our, our image of a palette right now. This is an XCF file, which is a GIMP file. Um, you could also use a uh, you know PNG file or whatever. If you find it off the internet, you can just, for example, you could grab you know a sprite of a character from an existing game, you know that's uh, you know set up and that has only the sprite, the colors of the sprite. You know nothing like an extra black or an extra white or something that's the background of the sprite. And you can use that for the palette that you're going to load in. Um, so anyway, we have our palette here. I was just kind of rambling. We have our palette here. It's loaded up into GIMP. What we can do is just right-click here, select Import Palette, select Image, 
and that is the palette we're going to uh i'm sorry image we're going to use we can name it if we want uh solar room is fine solar room palette and we have the number of colors this is the maximum number of colors i believe not the um yeah this is the maximum number of colors or the amount of i guess you could say cells or, or something like that uh on the palette so you could just leave it you know default just to make sure that you don't color uh, cut any colors off that are you know like for, for example very close to white or something to that effect uh you can change the number of columns if you want to have like a specific you know number or you uh feel like the default you know kind of cubed look is, is not good different little things like that um i'm not sure of the exact values of like what interval do does as opposed to others uh things like that but anyway the point is leave it by default it should load in and, and create your palette fine now so we have our palette here it's been loaded in and it's been named if you double click on it on the little um you can say the thumbnail it'll allow you to edit the palette palette here so this is basically from here you're you're pretty much good you can go ahead and you know choose the colors and, and you know mess around um the downside is that this is an editable editable little window you can actually edit this palette from this screen that's bad because you want to make sure that your palette basically doesn't change from image to image that's why you're using it you know assuming that you're one you want to use it across several images but the point is you don't want to you know tweak a, a color here and end up with you know wildly different uh images widely different colors especially throughout the course of let's say an entire game so what we can do is go to image here select mode and it's like indexed what this is going to do is basically make um kind of a i guess you could say like kind of like how, how you remember like nes games or things like that how the images were like based on a palette that was running on on the game at the time and you could like make different effects on the nes or developers would make different effects on the nes by like cycling the colors like for example um they would make you know it dark by just changing the outline color from blue to or from black to uh or i'm sorry the background color from white to black or whatever and kind of you know do little you know color uh changing effects and things like that um so anyway here you're going to use the custom palette option and then you're going to select your palette that you loaded in and you don't want to remove the unused colors from the color map that means that basically whatever colors aren't currently on the screen on this uh, canvas would be removed from the color map so we don't want that we want to keep all the colors from the color map convert you see the ch the color of the uh, canvas change slightly that's because white is not a color on my palette um, I have only a, a very light blue that's very very light almost white but not quite so that allows me to kind of do some uh, you know kind of a, a more interesting color in my opinion you know kind of just basic stuff um oh wait that's a yeah no okay cool all right so that's it what we have here is this is the palette editor that you can use to edit your palette that we saw earlier this is the color map screen which is basically the same thing in terms of like what it allows you to do you know select colors and and use them that's kind of the you know the the basic functionality but it is different in that you can arrange these as you wish you can't really directly edit the palette using this screen so it's kind of like a little safety fallback um, let's say we don't like the layout of our palette here because it's really like com not convoluted but a hap haphazard like you know if I wanted the darkest color it's kind of hard to see if you right click the any color in the color map you can select rearrange color map and then you have the option of going ahead going ahead going ahead and dragging the colors that you want to kind of rearrange them correctly or you can right click and select to sort them on different values like hue saturation or value so for example sorting by val uh, value the darkest colors at the top left and they increase in brightness not in saturation not in um, hue but in value so all of these are basically equally bright assuming that they were equally bright you know uh, so this is 100% brightness this is 0% brightness in terms of the scale although this is not zero percent <laughs> this is not black it's a very close uh very close color and so there it is that's it there it is that's it that's how you use palettes in your art so it's not too difficult to just go ahead and you know set up a palette and just get to painting and make some cool little guys and do some cool little things with gimp 
One last thing that you might want to be aware of is um, that guy looks pretty good. Last thing uh, that you want to be aware of, one, this is an indexed image, so you can't use things like erase or transparency. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. You can use uh, transparency. Um, you have to enable it first. So you can use transparency. I was <laughs> wrong on that. But you can't use filters while the image is a indexed image. So that's basically like you have to go ahead and convert it back to RGB in order to use any kind of advanced filters or things like that. Which means your color map will disappear, but you can either undo, whoops, undo out of it, or you can just go ahead and, and reapply it later. Something that's interesting um, is if you go ahead and do something like this, where you make choose a color that's not in the color map, we'll do something less stupid. Uh, choose a color that's not in the color map, like so, and then we go ahead and reset the color. The um, colors that aren't in the color map get pushed to the nearest color. So you can, you know, kind of draw the way you want and then push it over to the color map to kind of like see the effects of, you know, how it would look with this particular palette, which is nice. The downside is that if a color is not there, um, sometimes GIMP will just choose a color that's like mathematically is close, but it's, you know, your eye says, it says otherwise, <laughs> like you might choose a color that's pretty close to this, but then, um, Gimp says, oh, well, it's blue, so I'll just slide it to the nearest blue, which might be, you know, some wildly different value, and you have to go ahead and use your little tools to reset the colors and get them to look the way you want. Um, one other thing is, for some reason, if you go ahead and select a small pixel or something, and then you go overhead over here and rearrange the color map, it will rearrange all the colors that are currently being used by the indexed image, which is very interesting, and I wish I knew exactly how it worked, and how to do it because it doesn't happen all the time. It only happens if you select something, as far as I can tell. If you don't have anything selected and you rearrange the colors, everything's good. If you have something selected and you rearrange the colors, then things kind of slide around. All right, well, that's basically it when it comes to using your own palettes in GIMP. Um, and that's, yeah, that's it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Solar Loon, and uh, yeah, this has been a little how-to tutorial tip video on how to use your own palette in GIMP for pixel art. Thanks, have fun making pixel art, and uh, see you later.